think we should be the greatest city on earth in terms of country park. Hong Kong is a great city, not because of the buildings, but because of the green space we have, the forests and the water, um, the lakes, although we call it reservoirs, but actually there are lakes uh, in Hong Kong. We are 40% country parks, and uh, it would be very difficult to find any other city with this kind of percentage. Of course, this is used as an argument by the developers um, to to get land from country parks because they say that we have too much country park. Uh, we are above world average. You couldn't stand the thought that Hong Kong is the number one city in the world. They think we should be an average city. Uh, I hate people who think we should be an average city. I think we should be the greatest city on earth in terms of country parks. Uh, you could not find any country or any city where you could have enjoy great shopping and then the trade walking separated by 30 minutes. Um, I, I will try a different approach. Uh, I will try to give a little bit of historical context why we have so much country parks. Um, and I will go back all the way to 1967. Do you know what happened in Hong Kong in 1967? Were you born? <laughs> Way old, really. Yeah. Very old. So in 1967, what happened in Hong Kong? Liars. Uh, some people call it disturbances nowadays. Right. Uh, we had liars in Hong Kong. Um, initially, because of uh, disputes uh, in factories, overpay and so on, working conditions. So it was initially a social problem. And then, of course, a cultural revolution got involved, it became, it became a political thing, and we had a year of bias, disturbances, we had even bombs. We had terrorists in Hong Kong. So we, we, we had terrorists well before many people. Um, and at the end of... My phone is not very patient. Um, after the riots, the British government had a commission investigating into the causes of why why we had riots. And one of the conclusions was that young people had nothing to do. They had too much time. And and since they are dis dissatisfied with the working conditions, they just joined the riots, get some get, uh, get some fun out of the riots. And so afterwards, and of course, the government also realized that they have not had a much direct interaction with the Chinese population in Hong Kong. They have always worked through some kind of middleman, uh, VIP Chinese people. And so after the riots, we had what we call East Street um, City District Officers. In the old days, they had only district officers in the new territories. Uh, so we had, and then we, and then after a few years, we had ICAC. Oh, you know ICAC, the Independence Commission against corruption. So they thought corruption was also a contribution, contributing factor to the riots. And then they had Chinese as an official language in Hong Kong. After more than a hundred years of British rule, you know, because they thought that would be um, a mitigating factor. ICAC and Chinese as an official language uh, came into effect in 1974. And then I think in 1975, 76, we had our country parks. The country parks were established as a place where people can go for recreation, where young people can spend all their energy, where people can walk. Um, you might not realize this. A lot of the factory workers, especially the girls, they, they, they pick up the habit of barbecuing in country parks. So they no longer go to any rights. Um, the governor at that time described the country parks like this. The country parks to the poor is like 
golf courses to the rich. So we have to understand this historical context to realize the very great importance of country parks. It is where the power can go and take a proper breath of good air after weeks and months of hard work. And that's why when in 1960, uh, in 2013, someone talked about using land in the country parks for housing, there was a very significant response from the people. Paul okay. Zimmerman is one. Oh, you are here. 2013, we did something interesting. Remember? Um, after, after one of our secretaries talked about using country parks as land for housing, we had a, we invite people to take a walk in Thai Temple Reservoir on a particular day, and we never thought that more than a few hundred. We, we thought that oh, we could never expect more than a few hundred, but in the end, we got three thousand people coming, and it was well beyond the expectation of people who was trying to test the water. And I could tell you that that, that, that three thousand people were enough. To stop them, to stop them maintaining the whole country parks for two years. But in 2015, they come back. They came back again. They were we created some noise and then they stopped again. But but they never, but they never stopped trying. Now, um, country parks were established for recreation, and in the ordinance, it also talked about education. But in the ordinance, it mentioned nothing about ecology. It mentioned nothing about biodiversity. These terms didn't exist in 1976. Um, and so theoretically, the ordinance protects the country parks on the ground of recreation and education. Uh, and at the moment, government and, and some of the people who are trying to drive the government keep on saying that well maybe there are pieces of land within country parks of low ecological values which might be taken out for housing. Um, if you look at the law, they, 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 are, they are working on the wrong hand. They are working on the wrong hand. Um, and of course actually country parks also would, would contribute to um, uh, safeguarding heritage, if there is heritage within the country park. Um, we know that people in Hong Kong are very concerned about country parks because well before any official talked about country parks as source of land for housing, in 2010, a particularly rich man bought a village in Dalong Sai Wan and started building his own private resort. Um, very interestingly, at that time there was a Facebook campaign. Someone wanted to save Dalong Sai Wan. And I think within two weeks they had 60 or 70 thousand likes. And this is also something very new to the government. Um, so within, within a month or two, uh, Kerry Lam announced that um, Dalong Sai Wan would be frozen under the so-called direct, what do you call it, the development, uh, development the permit yes. system. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was the first sign shown by a demonstration of numbers among the people that we do care about country parks. Um, actually, there is, it's a matter of values. Hong Kong people are well known for valuing money. On that occasion, I think we have shown that we have, we have grown up a little bit. And we value something else. We value the hills, the water, or simply the space. Um, and now, I think other places are the same in the world. London. London is in the middle of a campaign. They want to be the first national park city in the world. If you, you, if you type the London National Park City, you would find things 
on your phone. Um, they realize that it's very important for the young people, the kids, to be connected to green space, to plants, to parks, for their healthy, uh, what do you call it, uh, growing up. And um, they have less green space than us. And but we are one, well, Hong Kong, Hong Kong officials like to talk about London, New York and Hong Kong as the three main cities in the world. But actually, we are number one when it comes to country park. London is trying to catch up. I don't know why we should move ourselves down to that. Well, one interesting thing comes out of China. Um, in 2015, the top echelon of the Chinese government, they had a a uh, very high level meeting in Beijing talking about city city planning or how they how they should build cities. And Chairman C was there wearing three hats. Secretary General of the Communist Party, a uh, head of the Chinese government, but also as the head of the PLA. Very heavy weight in the meeting. And um, it was clearly stated that cities should be built, designed in such a way that it would be in harmony with the surrounding nature. In the press release following the meeting, it said very explicitly that we should let citizens see the hills, see the rivers, so that they remember how it looks like in the countryside. But the presidency is a very special person. He knows the value of nation. I'm not a communist. Don't worry. I'm, I'm not. Uh, what do I? What do I? Free motion do. But I'm just presenting to you and not Now, um, and and he said very and he was said very clearly that uh, in the future there are certain red lines which could not be crossed. This is the usual jungle, red lines. And one of the red lines, uh, not the independence of Hong Kong, but uh, ecological red line. So long as there is a red line already drawn, no one is going to change, withdraw, or intrude into the red line, ecological red line. So from that point onwards, no national park in China could be jeopardized by highways or by anything else. Whoever, whoever crossed the red line in the national park, do anything there, they will be remembered for life. This is um, the new Chinese system. If you destroy the environment, natural environment resulting in certain disaster, even if you have moved out of the post, it will still be your responsibility. This is the new system in China. I think we should introduce the system in Hong Kong. Um, and uh, if you read Chinese literature in the past few years, they are talking about ecological civilization. And don't think that this is a communist invention. You, you, you can go those ecological civilization. You will realize that it is a new movement on this earth that we, that we should respect and live with nature or in another word ecology in whatever thing we do, including city planning. And you know, I seem to be giving out Chinese companies to protect them. <laughs> One more thing. Just I think two weeks, three weeks ago in China they have sent out a new di directive. There will be no more reclamation of the sea. No reclamation of the sea, of course, except except projects of major strategic importance. And who is who are going to define major strategic importance? South China Sea. Huh? South China Sea. <laughs> no, yes. no, not, not technically. <laughs> the party center, okay, uh, which is effectively the political Um and then the, uh, what do they call it, the Judicial and Reform Committee, which is part of the State Council. And 
and the armed forces, the PLA. So if you want to reclaim the land, you have to get consent from three parties. One, the party. Two, the government. Three, the armed forces. I don't know where will our government get the consent. And very specifically, no provincial projects will ever be accepted. No one, uh, only the central government can propose the recognition. So I think the 2,000 hectare East Lentau Metropolis. I will try to write a strong yeah, yeah. talk on this. Uh, we are contravening the, the guiding philosophy of our mighty pillars. <laughs> okay. But why, why I'm trying to make, to bring these points, the, the trouble is that our government, uh, or, or actually the real estate developers who are driving the government, they, they, are, they are not in sync with the emerging trend or the, actually the current trend on Earth, and that is we respect nature so that we could survive. Uh, not to say um, to live happy. Um, we, 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 we are now seeing a weakening. Even in a place like the Chinese China mainland. And I, I really wonder why is the awakening is not happening in Hong Kong. Um, Since 2013, people in Hong Kong have been trying very hard to test the water in terms of intruding into the country parks. The first time we, we, we hit them on the head, they stopped. Two years, 2015, they came back. We, we created some land. But then in 2017, 18, 19, they will keep on trying because so long as they are successful once, they will get into the place. So the trouble is it's an unequal war. We have to try all the time. They have to try until they succeed one time. Uh, so this is a very difficult uh, battle for whoever cares about the country. But I I am hopeful because the Hong Kong society have changed. The people in Hong Kong have changed their, their values in same with the rest of the world. I think especially since the last, or, or especially since we have had uh, very uh, long hot spells, I think everyone now believes in global warming, right? This global for keeping up more than warming. No. Um, and, well, legally the Convention of Biological Diversity has been extended to Hong Kong, so we have to respect the Convention. And the number one thing we have to do under the convention is to protect whatever they is they are already are there. That is our country park. So there's no reason why they should go into the country park for housing. And of course, we have explained very well that we have enough land elsewhere, right? Um, actually, in the past decades or so, many more people, especially young people, are going are going into the country park. For something like two decades, the average age of people visiting the country parks have been increasing one year per year. You understand the logic? It's the same old people. <laughs> <laughs> but now, we are beginning to see a fall in the average age. And every weekend, or if you every day, you see young people running in the country park. So I, I hope we have more people rising up in arms when government tried really hard to get the country back. Um, well, um, well, one more thing. The UK has earlier this year published a 25 year environment plan. <coughs> because they post, usually they publish a five year plan. Uh, they do it because they think that this is not something which so only to look at it a five year time scale. When it comes to nature, it comes to environment, you have to look very long term. So they publish a 25 year environment plan. 
And in, in the plan, they emphasize very much that our people, our population, especially young people and the kids, they should be given renewed connectedness to nature. Our young people are growing up among four walls, among buildings, and they have lost contact with nature. And these are becoming ruthless people, very dangerous. And uh, in order for the future world to be more peaceful, we need them to walk in the hills, we need them to play around with uh, watching birds, watching trees. And so for social uh, stability, we need the country park. We need the country park not just for the dollars, but for the very many ecological services it provides, or the scenery services it provides, or simply the space. In Hong Kong, we need space to take a good breath. Um, and young parents are taking their children to country parks. I am seeing more and more. So I, I don't have to preach to these people because we are all converted, are all converted to believers in the value of the country parks. And uh, the government and their rich friends keep on saying that we need the country parks to build houses for the poor. <coughs> but actually, the poor people, they need country parks most because they have no other form of entertainment that is free of charge, except maybe the air conditioning in the McDonald's factory. Uh, but they can't really stay there all the time. Um, and very surprisingly, I think within the last month, we had a press conference in Hong Kong in which people living in divided flats explicitly, explicitly stated that they object to using the land of country parks for housing because they think they need the country parks for a better purpose. So I will end of my short presentation on this. I'm sorry I have no PowerPoint. Um, but I hope you, you, you realize that um, the idea to use land for housing the poor is total nonsense. Thank you very much.